first and foremost, how have you been through this whole madness? Um, how has your world changed a little bit in the world of music journalists and, and journalism? And just, are you finding it tough? Are you finding more opportunities to write because there's all these different, these different stories in our business or, or what's kind of going on on that with you? The truth. I mean, I know people are way worse off than I am. I have a roof over my head and a great family, but you know, uh, there's less work because I'm a trade writer for the music business and the music business has been heavily impacted by the pandemic and the outlets I write for have to be very careful with their budgets. You know, they've lost a lot of revenue because there's no tours. So definitely less work. Um, and I got to say, it's kind of a lonely existence. I, I, you know, work from home anyway, but it's odd being forced to be here all the time and have nowhere to go. Like I go to concerts three or four times a week ever since I was 16 with my fake ID and uh which i no longer need believe it or not and um and even going to basketball games baseball games uh hockey if anyone gives me hockey tickets on a rare occasion but you know i miss just going out and uh so yeah it's 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 been pretty tough um but i'm also cleaning out my basement which is or was filled with about 60 bins of magazines and CDs. Mm -hmm. the, the publications were, you know, contained my articles, but they, I'm not that organized. They were mixed in with ones that didn't contain my articles. <laughs> so I've had to go through them and I'm like, I don't need 10 copies of Canadian musician and, oh, I'm not in this mag. So I've got a pile to, oh, contact this band to see if they want, that issue where they were on the cover right. uh, or this promo item and that kind of thing. Uh, I've got the recycle bin right outside. I've got the keep and try and sell these and the uh, keep because my articles are in and then CDs I'm getting rid of because I'm doing a big basement renovation starting in three weeks. What are you doing with the CDs? You must have thousands. I have a guy. Okay. I have a guy that takes them. Uh, and actually I should say purchases them and he used to sell them at, uh, colleges and universities on campus. So I'm not exactly sure what he's doing with them. And I'm down to the ones where I really want to keep these ones. So I'm having some, uh, separation anxiety with the remaining ones, but literally everything has to be out of my basement. So, yeah. I wonder... So I've got loads too, and I've got so many CDs from over the years and so many, and there's a good selection of ones that you want to keep. There's other ones that you've acquired. I'm sure you've got, Hey, Karen, write about my band. You must, there must be just a basement dedicated to that, which is really, but I don't even know what to do with them without, without being uh, too late yeah. getting rid of them. That's why. Like I moved into my house uh, 16 years ago, mm -hmm. right around the time where the record companies stopped sending me CDs. Right. And I I had probably 10 or 15,000 down there. So slowly I've been getting rid of them. Right. Um, but now I'm down to the ones where I'm keeping the, the ones that belong to my friends, you know, like yeah. the Zero and Our Lady Peace and, you know, Billy Talent. And then there's the artists that I love. So I'm keeping, you know, Sticky Fingers from the Stones and Springsteen and Neil Young and, you know, some, I, I have two cars and they're old cars and they both have CD players. So mm -hmm. you know, I do on occasion, you know, listen to CDs in the car, like Jeff Buckley, Chris Stapleton's a great driving uh, artist. Uh, but, and then demos, he doesn't take demos, so I'm keeping those. And I've done pretty well. I'm down to about 20 bins. So I'll be in a mad panic 24 seven for the next three weeks. It's interesting because I, if there's anyone uh, watching, listening, even post, if you have an idea about how to be, uh, how to get rid of these and still be great for the environment, I'll take all, all, all hints because it's really, I don't just want to throw them out. There's a lot that should probably go. And then there's other ones that, you know, that hold sentimental value. So it's very, 
That's very uh, interesting to me. I I have a question. Um, staying on that topic for a minute about the CDs that you acquired over the time, the shows you've seen, uh, the bands you've covered, written about, all the rest of it. Um, I didn't get into this last time with you, but is there anybody amongst that group of CDs that didn't break that you thought for sure was going to break? Like you're just like, I can't even believe this band didn't break. Yes. Um, do you know the, uh, act hours? O U R S. I mean, I've heard of them. I I've heard of the name hours. Yeah. Well, it's this guy, Jimmy Necco, the most incredible voice. Um, yeah, I go see him every time he plays and he's the type of artist that in fact, Lana Del Rey has a song. I think it's called Jimmy Necco, if you look it up. I think that's the actual name, and the, he, she brought him on the road. But he's the type of artist that singers, like true singers, like your Dallas Greens, like freaking love him. Um, and, you know, sometimes you don't have c control over, well, you don't have control over who's going to, like, blow up and what the reasons are. Everything has to converge. Estero, who's one of my closest friends, mm. and they up until last week had about a dozen of her boxes in my basement, but she's just an astounding, beautiful singer, a true artist. And, uh, you know, she's had some incredible opportunities working with, you know, black eyed peas, yeah. Fergie, uh, Prince loved her, you know, she, she's, she's great. I wish she was massive. Uh, I don't know if she cares or not, but mm. I wish that for her. Um, so is yeah. there a case of when she was like, cause I was with her, I was to her managing her brother Jay at the time too, when that was blowing up and everyone was, I mean, I know internationally, but she was kind of blowing up and then it kind of stopped. And there was a bunch of artists that kind of went through that phase. Do you think, I know this is a, probably a simple, uh, there's no such thing as stupid questions, but to me, Timing is everything. So what's the difference? Like, why do you think somebody like Astero didn't break through when she was, there was just so much press and so much everything about her? What, what held it back? I mean, I think she has a good career in that she's <laughs> very well respected by other artists and people that love her to this day are fans of her. Right. So they will always go see her perform. You know, she doesn't tour that much. She ha had a big band that's very costly. She could have just toured with Jay, which, you know, mm. she does play with him. I can't answer that, you know. Uh, there's artists on the chart that I wonder how the hell they even got on the chart. So, it's so frustrating when you see a talent like that. Uh, well, and, I, I, and I've touched on this before. Everyone has their definition of making it. So there's, you know... 30 million albums. And then there's the, that, that, that kind of area where the bands all just stop selling albums. So everyone has to make their own definition of making it. They have to have their own definition personally. And that could be, I mean, you know, 500 people a night. Be playing arenas and have people like, you know, uh, hiding in their bushes and on TMZ, like who wants a life like that? Like if you're no. living in the arts, doing something you love, you know, like for me, I would love to write every cover story for Rolling Stone and Billboard. Well, that hasn't happened. I've never written a cover story for Billboard or Rolling Stone. I would love that opportunity. It's probably mm. not in the cards, right? So um, I'm happy with my level of success and the opportunities and the people that I've met. But, you know, there's definitely way better writers and uh, other people that get those kinds of opportunities. So. Yeah, it's it's yeah. quite something when it uh, to watch it go, but uh, you know it it always this kind of world is great right now for for people uh, being able to put stuff out, especially somebody like her that's got a deep fan base that would be like, I would. There's so many bands I would love to hear music from right now that, uh, but it's a tough time to release albums right now because you can't tour on it at all. Yeah.